Chris, and welcome to Adventures in Pixie Land. This is going to be your weekly reading going from January 2nd to January 9th. Happy New Year! I hope all is well with you. I'm sorry last week's uh, reading was so very disruptive. Uh, Kai just no longer here with me. I was only puppy sitting. I didn't do anything, okay? I was just puppy sitting. Um... You know, her owners came home from their trip and they collected their puppy. Um, I will see those same owners and that puppy here for one more night coming up real soon. Because we're having a whole, we're having a sleepover kind of thing. So, just for all this to get together. So it's a beautiful thing. She'll be back, but I won't be trying to pull her readings on that day. <laughs> I'm sorry she was so disruptive. Because she was very much disruptive, I know. Okay, now, let's start in with, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. They really do make such a huge difference for the channel. YouTube's uh, matrix only even sees, gets these videos out to as many people as if there's a lot of interest by the like and subscribes. That's how it works. That's, it's just for their algorithms, otherwise I wouldn't even really care. Uh, also... Um, if you're feeling my vibe and you want some kind of personal reading, all that's down in the description box. Everything down there. I mean, so you can find all the social media contacts down there. The email address is down there, okay? There's also, uh, as well as, like, a link to Gig Salad if you wanted to book me for an event. A link to Patreon if you wanted uh, personal readings at a regular basis. A link to the Square Store, which can also be found through the Instagram and Facebook Marketplace to book a live Zoom call personal read, a uh, pre-recorded reading, or the energy reading, which gets you your full natal chart, your transits, which I have to tell you, this is the best time of year to do that kind of thing. Because when I'm, then when I'm pulling the transits, it's going to give me the report for the whole year. And then you will get to see what you should be working on for the whole year. I myself am going to be running one of these reports for myself this weekend just so I can see it. I mean, I'm in there already, so I, but I need to see my own transits to see what I should be working on in 2024. Because let's get into a little bit of astro well numerology before we jump into the, the astrology, okay? Oh, also there's the link to the Redbubble store down there. And don't forget you have the daily energy readings. They have affirmations in them. Say them three times. Okay, so... To find out what kind of year the whole world's going to have, you add up just the, you know, four digits in the year. So two plus zero plus two plus three, which is what we just had, was a seven. That was a year all about relationships. This one, two plus zero plus two plus four, is an eight, right? So eight has a specific definition in numerology. Hey, Alexa, in numerology, what does an eight mean? The study of numbers and their symbolic meanings in relation to human life and the universe is known as numerology. Uh -huh. It is thought that each number has a distinct uh -huh. vibration and significance that can provide insight into one's personality, uh -huh. life path, and relationships. Okay, apparently Alexa need, thought you needed to know exactly what numerology was. That's not what we asked for. Alexa, in numerology... What does the number 8 mean? Numerology is At the Alexa, of numbers stop. and how they relate to life. It is believed... Alexa, in numerology, what does the number eight mean? In numerology, the number eight represents power, success, and wealth. It is associated with personal authority and ambition, as well as stability and practicality. The number eight symbolizes the combination of strength and balance in life, and it is considered a powerful and successful number. So it's the thing about power and balance and duality and keeping one's self in alignment by staying in balance okay so if you want to know what kind of year you're having though you've got to start with that eight number and then you got to take then you got to take the uh, month you were born and the day you were born in numbers and add that to the eight so for instance I was born in May on the 6th. So that's an 11, which is a 2. That's an 8, right? Because 2 plus 0 plus 2 plus 4 is an 8. 
times two, that's a 10. There are no double digits unless it's very key specific numbers, which 10 is not one of them. So it's a one. Ones are all about new beginnings in numerology. So I'm having a year of new beginnings in 2024. And thank goodness, man, because 2023 was rough. Did you guys find that? The 2023 lay hands on you, Aquarius, because I have a feeling like 2023 <laughs> decided to lay hands on a lot of people. <laughs> and so, whew, I mean, for me, I've already, like in 2023, I changed jobs. So this is my first, you know, we're starting at the very beginning of a, you know, of a season for the very beginning with the new company. Um, I mean, I started it back in August of 2023, but it doesn't matter. It's like it's a full transition here. It's a new pattern, new environment. I worked at that other place for 15 years. or almost 15 years. It would have been 15 years in October had I stayed the extra few months, but I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it. I didn't have it in me. I no longer belonged in that environment. So for me, it is all new. Lots of things were in flux last year that wrapped up and came to a conclusion. So for me, it is all new. This is everyday life. So you need to figure out what kind of year you're going to have, Aquarius. You need to do that exercise for yourself. Now, I happen to know that there's two other people that I'm, uh, I like to communicate with on a regular basis. One of which is a Capricorn and the other one is indeed an Aquarius. And we are all on the same spans because our first, uh, you know, two digits of every year uh, of our, our birth date and our birth month uh, are the same, always. So, me and those two uh, particular individuals are always having the same year. If you're an Aquarius and you're close to me, and you're, uh, and I like to also watch your YouTube channel, which you guys can find because it's on here. It's uh, at the end of these videos as a link to check out that channel. There's a friend of mine, his name is Jake. If you're watching Jake, you're also having a year one because <laughs> we are on the same cycle. On the second. The waning gibbous moody moon is in practical Virgo and it's trying. Let's make a list of all the things we're grateful for. Trying transformative Pluto and Taskmaster Capricorn. And at 7.47 p.m. EST, the waning gibbous moody moon enters into balance loving Libra. Expect power struggles in the morning. Focus on positive transformations. The evening compromise, balance, and time spent with family will become the balm that suits you. So I will tell you on the 4th, 4th I do believe it is, yes. So Mars goes into Capricorn on the 4th. Now, I'm not going to read you the rest of the astrology for that on the 4th because there's nothing else to concern ourselves with. And Mars moving into Capricorn isn't a concern. It's actually a like, hallelujah, because Mars is exalted in Capricorn. Not because Capricorn is ruled by Mars. No, no, no. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. It's exalted in Mars because Saturn is very strict and Capricorn is the taskmaster and it can take control of that Mars energy and focus us for the next 44 days. So the next 44 days, you'll probably be the most focused that you will ever be for the next, I'm going to say about two years because it takes Mars two years to go back through the sun. So enjoy, especially if you've got things to do. If you've got tasks you need to finish up that's the time okay on the fifth that waning crescent moody moon is in passionate scorpio and it is sextile action taker mars in taskmaster capricorn emotions will be what inspire us to take action there are plenty of projects to focus on we're going with the flow of our emotions to inspire us to what we need to get accomplished on that day. I.e. let your intuition lead you, please. It's a day to follow the intuition. On the 6th, the waning crescent moody moon is in passionate Scorpio. 
So we're still going with the flow of our emotions. Our intense, passionate emotions, because Scorpio. And it's opposite. That's not good. 180 degree angle in the night sky. The planet of disruption, Uranus, retrograde in foundational Taurus. Impulsive energy can be running high. Now, we need to be careful here with impulsive energy. Impulsive energy is often impatient. This is different from divine inspiration. You're like, how can you tell the difference? Divine inspiration will give you an idea. Whether or not you sit down and plan it out, or you start going off half-cocked without planning a single thing, is the difference between impulsive information, you know, impulsive energy, and divine inspiration. I'm not going to say that divine inspiration doesn't sometimes require us to move quickly, because sometimes we do get a strike while that iron is hot. But that's not the kind of energy we're talking about. We're talking about looking before we leap. We're talking about doing something that we should be planning, but we're not. We're playing, you know, fuck it. That's not really what we're playing. Fuck it, let's find out. Let's see what happens. And sometimes we need to do that. But we should be doing that after we've, you know, done a bunch of stuff first as pre-work. Try to bring in as much, you know work as we can into the situation. So, self-control is what today is all about. Self-control is what comes into focus. Work on making small changes that give you something different to do. You're bored. Okay. You don't need a whole bunch of other stuff. You're bored. It's not the same thing. You don't need a new hobby. You need to do something different from what you normally do. On the 8th, Messenger Mercury is in dynamic Sagittarius and it's square, the planet of illusion, Neptune, and dreamy Pisces. The mundane is not where it's at. <laughs> Creative projects allow your imagination to soar, i.e., again, you're bored. And on the 9th, the self-focused sun is in taskmaster Capricorn. Trine, that's favorable, 120 degree angle in the night sky. Uranus, planet of disruption, retrograde in foundational Taurus with action taker Mars and taskmaster Capricorn. Sextile, that's favorable, 60 degree angle in the night sky. Our work ethic Saturn, Capricorn's ruling dignitary, in dreamy Pisces with that waning crescent moody moon spending time being mindful and going with the flow entering into taskmaster Capricorn there are more opportunities in the world than you are looking at right now discipline will be what makes you hit your goals work on the long term plans but do it on a granular level. The time for big picture thinking is kind of done. It's time for the, the nitty gritty of things. It's time to get into the nitty gritty. And you are definitely a sign where you know what that means. From my very fixed heart Taurusness to your very fixedness, very fixed heartness of your Aquarius self. It's time to get into the nitty gritty. Aquarius. January 2nd, January 9th. I don't know what that's about Aquarius, but I don't like it. Aquarius, January 2nd to January 9th. As I've explained, I have dear friends and family who are Aquarius. Aquarius, January 2nd. To January 9th. I don't have any of my chart though. Not a single solitary drop of it. Lots of air, just no Aquarius. In fact, it's the only air sign I don't have in my chart. What Aquarius? What is this? Aquarius, January 2nd to January 9th. Aquarius, January 2nd to January 9th. Aquarius, January 2nd. To January 9th. I'm actually 
you know, wired very differently. Because, you know, one of your uh, ruling dignitaries is uh, Uranus, which is the planet of technology and disruption, right? Which is in foundational Taurus right now, which is beautiful, but my Uranus, because uh, I'm, I'm a Taurus sun, Taurus moon, my Uranus, uh, on the other hand, and Taurus and my Chiron and a lot of other asteroids. So I heal uh, by learning, by doing, right? I heal by doing. I have to be practical and busy. I have to keep busy. I'm, you'll know when I'm in my most healing state because I'll be very, very productive. And that just really means I'm not focused on any uh, emotional relationships at the moment. Not that I, I don't necessarily have one or any. Just they're not my primary focus. They're fine over there. So I'm over here being busy. That's part of the healing process for me. Now, my Uranus is in Scorpio. So what inspires me to make changes is emotions. When I make changes, though, they're very disruptive. They're very quick. They're very, you know, death card, right? It's not a little bit. It's drastic. And it can seem like a lot to a lot of people. But in very true Taurus nature, it's really just a case of I've been thinking about these things for a while. They might even be something that someone else told me to do. And I've just finally decided that not only is that a good idea, but here's how I can manage it. And here's how I worked it into the plan to do it. The nitty gritty is kind of where Taurus is left. I've worked with a lot of Aquariuses. I feel like it's kind of where Aquarius is left too. In your past there, Six of Swords. I know I didn't go over all this. Hold on. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> welcome back. Or if you're a new viewer, welcome. Past, present, near future. Someone to you. You to the someone. Balance, outcome, summary. This is a general reading. Take what resonates. Leave the rest. There is no gender in tarot. You are either walking up to someone and talking, or someone is talking, walking up to you and talking. And this whole reading is a conversation between you and at least one other person. Because some cards do mean groups. That one, because there are going to be hands at the end of this one. It doesn't always, though. Not really any of the rest of these. Also on this channel, relationship, because it's definitely that, uh, is a continued interaction between any two people. I'm describing energy. You can place it on the person that sounds like, and then that's the relationship this talk is, we're talking about. Because, you know, this whole thing is a conversation. So in your past there, Six of Swords, you wanted to go moving on into calmer waters, Four of Swords. You might have taken a break or a rest on something. Eight of Swords. Then you got all up in your head spinnies. Would you do that to yourself, Aquarius? Head spinnings are not where it's at, dude. What are you doing to yourself? Knock it off. Now you've got yourself in the present moment in your Five of Pentacles because you went in head spinnings in here. We're totally going to clarify these with these decks, okay? Just in case somebody's like, was that the clarification? No, it's not the clarification. These decks are the clarification. This is just a starting place. You're in, your, you're in this loss, lack attitude, or someone else's. I really hope that's someone else. I hope that's not you. Money could be tight. You could be feeling like it's you're trapped. You're not trapped. The key's right here. There's the lock. Now, yes, she's awfully small for that size of a key. But she's also only a certain portion, right? Her legs are longer than the key are, so if she stood up, she probably could pick it up. It might be a struggle, but she'd get it in there and she'd get out, and then we wouldn't be crying in the corner for no reason. Seven of Wands in your near future. That's feeling defensive. You're feeling self-protective. Defensive always found so negative. In this case, it's not like that. It's like you're protecting yourself. You're in your bubble. See, that's your solar plexus chakra. It's your gut instinct. Your gut instinct says... Focus on what you have in front of you right now. Ignore the rest of the world. These hands are pointing at you because they don't like the fact that you're not giving them the attention they want. Or something they want. Take that as it resonates. Seven of Wands. Six of Cups. This is a soulmate connection. Somebody you've known a long time. You could have grown up with them. You could have known them just for many, many years. As you can see with the depiction. Yes. It can be a romantic relationship. It doesn't have to be. Clearly. It's a man and his dog. 
Although, I'm, I gotta say, I'm very surprised because this guy looks like he's way older than 10 years older than that, and that's a particular type of dog, and they only live for so many years. So, because he looks quite old there. So it's somebody you've known a very long time, somebody somebody you had an alliance with, somebody, they could be a friend, they could be a family, they could be a romantic partner, it doesn't matter. A death card, uh, Scorpio energy, I mean, they matter to you. As for as long as you've known this person, there's like, their absence would be something that you noted. Whether or not it's a, you know, somebody you just met and it's just a soul tie and you feel it really strong, or somebody you've known a really long time. That's Scorpio energy. The death card. We really have to clarify. I cannot tell you anything other than that Scorpio energy. It could be an ending, or it could be a new beginning, or a rebirth of something. We gotta clarify. Four of Cups in uh, this is part of why we clarify. Four of Cups in uh, Aquarius in your your position. You're not interested in whatever this is. One must. It almost doesn't matter because you're not interested. I'm sorry. I know that's intrusive. It was my hand. Somebody was trying to call. I didn't want it to keep in bothering. It's always like this with the first reading of the day. And you, you start out your own day of stuff. You're the first reading of the day on a particular day. People don't like to leave us alone. Four of Cups. You're not interested in something. Nine of Wands. That's Sagittarius energy. It's defensive energy. This is the hill I'm willing to die on energy. Six of Pentacles. You're, you're pretty sure you're not interested. Six of Pentacles because there's bread crumbing. Four of Pentacles, you feel like there's a block going on or this person feels blocked. Or bread crumb. Three of Wands. You're thinking about your future here. And this idea of continuing whatever this is, where you feel like you're being bread crumbed, you feel like there's a lack of money, you feel like there's a lack of everything, makes you sad. That's why you don't want to go on for the future. Or this person uh, could be sad at your absence. Let's find out. <clears throat> what is the Six of Swords in Aquarius' past? Gift. Okay. What is the Six of Swords in Aquarius' past? What is the Six of Swords in Aquarius' past? What is the Six of Swords in Aquarius' past? Okay, so there was this relationship that came along that ace of pentacles or maybe an opportunity that came through a relationship maybe an opportunity for balance temperance card could have been from a sagittarius balance it away from this confusion you were moving away from the seven of cups energy what is this four of swords luck what is this four of swords what is this Four of Swords? Ooh. I don't know what that's about. Very glamour. Very glamour shifts you from one focus to another, revealing the true, revealing your, truly revealing your essence. Okay? Call upon the glamour when you feel the need for confidence and a self of belief and gaze upon your, in awe upon your own true self. I don't, I don't know why you needed to see that, but okay. It flipped over, so it must have been for you. What is this Four of Swords? What is this Four of Swords? I was just adjusting this. It was messy over here. <laughs> I looked over and it was very messy. <laughs> Okay, so there was some sort of betrayal feeling. Either you betrayed somebody, somebody else felt betrayed. Scorpio energy again with that judgment. Somebody called it a uh, judgment. And you felt like there was a need to take some sort of break. Because some lucky sort of opportunity popped up for you. It sort of almost, almost feels like when one door uh, closed, another door opened. What's this? Eight of Swords and Aquarius has passed. Aid. Okay. If you were feeling head spinny, creator could have sent somebody, or some help could have come, or 
uh, you could, could have given aid to someone else. What's this Eight of Swords? What's this Eight of Swords? What's this Eight of Swords? Four swords again. Well, I pick it up because four swords to four swords, right? <coughs> you were taking some sort of break, possibly from a Capricorn, maybe from uh, some sort of toxic behavior, and some opportunity came in. Uh, page of Pentacles, some opportunity that was aid to help you out of your head spinnies. I don't know who helped you out of your head spinnies, but aid was sent and you came out of your head spinnies. Five of Pentacles. What's this Five of Pentacles in Aquarius's present moment? So why are you feeling lost lack now? Oh, you feel like somebody took from you. That's been going around. What's this Five of Pentacles? And I, I don't mean like just that feeling. I mean energy speaking it's like there's a bunch of energy vampires going around oh, across the five feet stealing people's potential stealing people's money what's this five of pentacles what's this five of pentacles what's this five of pentacles queen of swords any air sign aquarius libra gemini Heavy on the Gemini. I'm sorry, heavy on the Libra. Also a card of Virgo. You could be dealing with one of those. Cancer, Pisces. Yeah. So there's just like this feeling like something's going around in the darkness, under across the surface, under the seam, sort of behind the veil of, you know, trickery and thievery and this feeling of loss and lack. And so maybe somebody's trying to make you feel this way, or maybe you just feel this way and you can't explain why four of cups but you're not interested in this energy you're like no i want to be in a state of gratitude i don't want to be in a state of this so you need to be using your discernment here about that what's the seven of wands or there could be um a queen of swords who's responsible for that take that as it resonates because it could be depends on the person's life what is the seven of wands what is the Seven of Wands? Okay, so this person feels defensive. Uh, seven of Wands. Or you feel defensive against this person. Because they're trying to send this illusion, this daydream energy. They're, they're lying. Seven of Swords. Lying, stealing, cheating, manipulating. And I get a feeling like you're realizing now, because the divine timing is at play. You're going to realize here in your near future, because that's what this is, just how deep this goes. What's the Six of Cups in Aquarius's near future? Illness. So there's a relationship you've had for a very long time that's sick, or somebody that you have know for a very long time is sick. What's the Six of Cups? What's the Six of Cups? What's the Six of Cups? Cancer Pisces energy with the High Priestess. But there's some kind of illness. Five of Swords going on here. Nine of Swords, which is like a nightmare energy. It's like something you don't even know is happening. It's happening behind the veil. I feel like it's going to be something that you find out about. What's this death card in Aquarius's near future? Indulcement, persuasion, bribe, and temptation. Somebody's oh, I see. And you're going to say no, thank you. What's this death card? Because you're already in no, thank you right there. What's this death card? See what's up with this person. Yeah, there's your breadcrumbing energy. Two of Wands. This person's standing at a crossroads. They're going to try to offer you something small, but it's really a breadcrumb. It's not real. Nine of Cups, any air sign. I'm sorry, any water sign. Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. 
heavy on the Pisces. Also a card of Aquarius, so you could be dealing with another Aquarius. But this is a card of Scorpio. There's, It's just something coming to an end, so it's sort of like the last throws. What's this Four of Cups in Aquarius's? Yeah. Donation. Yeah. That spirit is, this is spirit trying to tell you, say no. What's this Four of Cups? What's this Four of Cups? Because you're undecided about this. What's this Four of Cups? Seven of Pentacles. Okay. So it's something you've been waiting to grow. Two of Wands, I mean, Two of Swords. So it's also something, could be with a Libra, but it doesn't have to be, that you're just undecided about. Okay. You've been undecided about it, and it's really, you feel lackluster about it because the Divine just really wants you to just say no to it. Saying no to it, Six of Wands is the victory. I feel like you've always known you were going to say no to whatever this is, but you had to wait for the person to ask the question that you knew they were going to ask for you to decline. What's this Nine of Wands? Somebody's feeling defensive because they they want to have uh, they want to be extravagant and ludicrous. What's this nine of wands? What's this nine of wands? What's this nine of wands? It's the hierophant. That's Taurus energy, but it's also a card of the divine. A uh, Gemini Virgo energy with the magician. Feeling defensive. Because you feel like somebody is being over the top or trying to manifest something over the top within some sort of relationship, four of wands. Maybe they're trying to manifest. Maybe they're trying to go over the, the top to manifest you, even. I mean, there's something here. This relationship is from the divine. So somebody could be feeling, you know, defensive about a relationship you're in. What's the Six of Pentacles? Savings. Okay. What's the Six of Pentacles in Aquarius's? You're going to have a realization. What's the Six of Pentacles in Aquarius's outcome? Hangman. Knight of Pentacles. So, this person in the Six of Pentacles energy, this person, you're going to have a realization here, Ace of Swords, Hangman, Pisces energy, which you, you know, you can get from the Knight of Cups, so I have you with that Pisces energy. Uh, Virgo and Leo energy have you here with this uh, Knight of Pentacles, but it's also a sign that you might just need to move on. You're going to have some sort of realization about this person, this higher perspective about money. Six of Pentacles, you know, what they have saved, what you might have saved, and this need to slowly move forward. Knight of Pentacles, what's the Sword of Pentacles? In Aquarius's summary, merit making. What's this four of pentacles in Aquarius's summary? Okay. Nine of pentacles, ten of pentacles. Knight of wands, any fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Heavy on the Aries. I mean, sorry, or heavy on the Sagittarius. Also, card of Scorpio, which is what the death card is. This person's trying to put up some sort of block towards success that you've earned. Nine of Pentacles and merit making. Could be at work. Ten of Pentacles. Could be about money, though. They could be trying to actively block your money, actively block your, uh, your right to whatever you've earned. Because merit making isn't a gift. Merit making happens when one puts in the effort. And when we put in effort for something, other people can't block it. They can try. They can slow it down. But they can't really block it. They can't stop it. What's this Three of Wands in Aquarius's summary? Schedule. Okay. You're thinking about your future. What's this Three of Wands? What's this Three of Wands? 
This is three of swords. What's this three of wands? Okay. Something is illuminated for you here. Sun card, that's Leo energy. You want to be happy within with your schedule. There's some outside interference though. You're thinking about your future, you're thinking about your time frame, your schedules, and this uh, desire to be happy, this uh, desire to be balanced. This is Libra energy, contract, document, paperwork, marriage, but three of swords, I would look up the angel number 33. Um, because there's some sort of outside interference here on this contract, document, paperwork, marriage, it's the schedule. What is this Five of Cups? Okay, we'll take that one. Origin. What is this Five of Cups? What is this Five of Cups? My swords, page of swords. Okay, so. Queen of Wands, Eddie Fire Sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. Heavy on the Aries. Also card of Libra and a card of Pisces. Knight of Swords, any air sign. Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. Heavy on the Gemini. Also card of Taurus. Page of Swords. There's going to be something you find out from this communication that's going to come rushing in. Either from this Queen of Wands or about this Queen of Wands. So there's going to be this origin of this sorrow, this sadness, this Five of Cups. That is this reason, this realization that you're going to be having here that you need this this higher perspective in order to slowly move on with your savings that somebody else is trying to interfere with because they're a jerk Aquarius like I'm sorry somebody's trying to take your money I don't know why they would do that that's mean of them but they can't do anything I remember to laugh okay so this is the rebel rebel tarot deck it's really an oracle I am going to pull one, three, one card here uh, for a subject matter. Uh, I will warn you that these cards have a potty mouth. So, as you can see for yourself. Um, I'm going to pull one card for your subject matter of advice. Let's see here. About this four of pentacles why are they trying to block you that's what i want to know tell me about this four of pentacles in aquarius's summary tell me about this four of pentacles what do we need to know about this four of pentacles okay what we got because we have to read both sides okay you are talented and fucking amazing okay the world needs your power use your voice just don't use it for dumb shit. Okay, so careful with your words at this time, Aquarius, because words that you're at this time are going to be what makes it so that somebody tries to block something. Four of Pentacles is a block. You could speak the wrong things at the wrong time and create your own problems. We are actively co-creating with the universe at this point. So speak life into your world, not negativity. Advice for Aquarius. January 2nd to January 9th. Advice for Aquarius. January 2nd to January 9th. Advice for Aquarius. January 2nd to January 9th. Empress. Uh, Taurus Libra energy. Which there was quite a bit of Libra energy in here. Uh, Knight of Pentacles, any earth sign, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. Heavy on the Virgo, also card of Leo. You need to be walking away from whatever this is. Whatever this is. With this terrible people energy with them trying to bribe or do something to you walk away from that shit walk towards whoever this is now the empress is taurus libra energy but it is also um it is also about uh mothers you it could be a mother it could be the mother of your children you could be a mother it could be a mother figure it could also be a uh a boss if that applies for you 
give you some of this advice. Okay, so uh, if you have a yes or no question you would like answered, this is the time to think it because this is the deck that does it. I'm going to pull three cards. It's your opportunity to pause the video to think of one to three yes or no questions that you would like answered. Message for Aquarius. Abundance. Message for Aquarius. Okay, well, so we have take action. It's also a yes. And then choose a new direction, which is a no. Yes, yes, and no. Advice for Aquarius. December 2nd to the 9th. What do you need to release? Waning moon. Advice for Aquarius, December 2nd to the 9th. Your commitment is being tested for a quarter moon. Advice for Aquarius, December 2nd to the 9th. Don't let your past hold you back, south node. What you don't see coming at the bottom of the deck. Prosperity lies ahead, new moon in Taurus. Look at the bigger picture. Full moon in Sagittarius. A time to give rather than take, new moon in Virgo. Adjustments are required. Third quarter moon. Okay. Sorry about that, Aquarius. It's that kind of day, apparently. All right, so a time to give rather than take, new moon in Virgo. Prosperity lies ahead, new moon in Taurus. Look at the bigger picture, full moon in Sagittarius. Don't let your past hold you back, south node. So your commitment is being tested. There are things from your past that you need to release because remember this is advice adjustments are required you need to be looking at the bigger picture because you know what you're looking for lies in the future and not in the past that's how I'm going to word that advice or I should say message for Aquarius okay. fairy protection we cherish and protect and heal our friends, the animals. We watch over them and see how you love them too. This alliance between our worlds helps us all grow strong. I hope that helps, Aquarius, because it's what I have for you. And just remember, as you go about the world this week, that you are a child of the universe. No less than the trees and the stars. And you have a right to be here.